All Eyes on Fishing with Mitch Peterson, Josh Sheldon, and Brad Qualley, leading you to the next level. Welcome back to All Eyes on Fishing. Over the last couple podcasts, we've talked about some things that we're doing now. The last one we talked about was uh, Lindy Riggin and live bait presentations that Mitch does very well. So if you didn't listen to that one, make sure you, you go back and listen to that because what, that's what you can do right now. But over the last couple podcasts, we've talked about things we're doing. And one of those things that Josh does, he does it quite a bit this time of year, is, and this is from a boat application, but it's lead core. A lot of people are scared about lead core. They just don't get it. It's a, it's a, it's a crazy looking line. But we're going to go over some things that will help you when you're out on the water and how you can get more fish with lead core. Right. The important thing to remember with lead core is don't be intimidated by it. It's a great tool. It's something you can use um, at all different times, uh, including springtime or fall. I do really well with it in the fall, but it's a great way to get your baits down. And, uh, and away from the boat. And away from the boat. And, and the thing about lead core is lead core is uh, a little bit slower getting it out. It's a little bit slower sinking than, let's say, like snap weights or something like that. But it really does well with contour trolling. So if you're going to troll and you're trolling area where the bottom starts out at, let's say, 25 feet and you want to troll about 20 feet, it would be great for that. And then all of a sudden the bottom comes up to 15 feet uh, for 100 yards. Well, all you have to do is pick up your speed just a little bit while you're trolling. A titch. And it picks that line right up. And that, you know, as if you're doing a snap weight, the snap weight would probably tend to hang up. You could speed up, but the reaction of the snap weight is, is a little bit slower. It doesn't flow like the uh, like the, the lead core does. But let's, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about lead core. And um, we, we have, uh, I know we have at least two different uh, thoughts about how we rig our stuff. Mm-hmm. So how I rig my lead core. Before we get into rigging it. What size lead core you use? Well, and, that, and that's a good question. You know, lead core is one of those deals where, um, you know, I I don't see a lot of difference once you start getting into the higher weights. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, you can do 12 uh, pound and be fine. I like the 18. I think that works best for most of our applications. But I know guys that, that go way up, you know. And, like that 27. And that 27. And, and I, you know, for me, it's also capacity. It's line capacity. <clears throat> That's the biggest thing. Put them on a line counter reel or any right. base pool. Uh, 18. That's what all of ours is. Yeah, all yeah. of ours are 18 and, too. Yep, and yep. 18, and maybe it's just because that's what I'm used to. I've tried some of the lighter stuff, and I had to let out an ungodly oh, yeah. amount. Yeah. And the, and we had the 27 that I bought on accident, and I was like, Jesus, I only got five colors on my reel, and it's full. Right. Well, I probably didn't need that much to get out, so I was probably fine, but I just ripped it off, and then I put on my 18. Right, right, and know? it's expensive to just rip off. I mean, if you yeah. if you mess up and buy the wrong one, that's like a you know, $45, $50 uh, lesson. So, <laughs> right. uh, I, I think with that, the most important thing is uh, say, say you've got two rods for your, yourself that you're set up in your boat, and those are your lead core rods. Right. Um, just so they're the same weight. Right. Um, that, that I think that's the biggest. Thing. Absolutely. Um, you know, yeah, and and same color. 18, same so, color pattern. Yep. That's the other big thing is you know, and guys, you don't have to spend a fortune on um, the lead core. I mean, I like the Cabela's brand. I do too. Uh, I and, really do. It's, yeah. What, when, what, well, I know we're going to get in this and how you attach your leaders right. to the, to that, but I find it the easiest one to attach on, on the way we sure do. sure. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, Let's just focus on 18 because that's what we use. Okay. You guys out, out there, if you're using 12, there's not, it's not like, oh, my God, i got to go buy 18. Use what you're comfortable with. Right. Mm-hmm. But so rod selection for lead core. A trolling rod, soft rod, what do you do? Well, and they, that's the important is a lot of these places now, uh, like we've talked about in the past with the jigging rods, they're making rods specifically for lead core. Uh, we put out a video and somebody left a comment, oh, that looks like a deep sea rod. No, it's not a deep sea rod. It's a long, um, fairly light, very flexible, whippy um, uh, lead core rod. And you do that because lead core has no stretch. And you get these fish and they whack a, a crankbait at two miles an hour on lead core and that rod absorbs that that impact. If it doesn't, it's gonna tear right off and you're gonna lose the fish. Yeah. So you do that for several reasons and it's not a deep sea rod. It may be big and it may look like it's big and they're long, but 
you don't it's not it's 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 got a whippy action because it's soft and and i'll tell you what it's awesome when you fight big fish yeah it really no, ours is. are seven and a half eight foot rods yeah i think we got a couple eight and a half and you can get them up 10 or 12 feet just yeah. to get them away from the boat you know and they work great so and another one that i do in a setup that i have and i don't know if you guys have done this yet but i use uh very short steelhead rods so i use the cabela's brand rod it's great it's not very expensive and i call them my stubbies and i have two rods set up off the back of the boat and um it again it's a steelhead rod or, or for steelhead salmon fishing um but it's it's still whippy it's short and that allows me to create distance between my eight and a half foot or nine foot rods that go off the side and my stubby rods that go off the uh, back. We have two stubby rods too, and both of ours we use the ugly stick. Five and a half sure. foot ugly sticks. Yep, five and a half foot ugly sticks, and we call them shorties. Yep. yep. So, <laughs> yeah. so you throw the shorties off the back, and it works great. If you haven't done it, not only that, but rod storage for those things are amazing. They fit on the front deck of my Ranger. I can strap them down, no problem, and off you Your go. Stubbies. Yep, the stu- <laughs> yeah. my stubbies fit on the ranger. So, and then the big ones, you know, you have to lay on the side because they are longer. You break them down, stick them in the rod locker. But still, I mean, it's you know that's the the way to go. So line, we all we all agree, you don't have to go expensive. Now the suffix, more expensive, really good stuff. I really like it. But whatever you do, make sure you put the same line I, on I all don't, your reels. I, I'll be honest, and I know there's probably a a bunch of people out there that run the suffix. We've done it for a couple years. And we went back to the Cabela's brand. I didn't like the way that the suffix tied on. Mm-hmm. I didn't like it. Yeah. Well, and the, and the reason I like the way it ran, but I didn't right. like the way you could put your lead on. Okay. Well, and there's, but there's, and, and I know why you didn't like it. And yeah. We'll get into that in a second. But, um, but as far as colors go, I, I, I definitely suggest you use this the same on all yours because then you know when I'm at green, it's four colors, and it's at four colors for all my rods. Yeah. No, you're right. And that way you don't get confused. Yeah. Also, I suggest putting it on a line counter rod uh, reel. Because, uh, you know, you can put out colors, but sometimes you're not putting out full colors. And it really does make a difference sometimes when you're using lead core if you have out, you know, uh, 76 feet or 79 feet of line. Because it might just be that little bit deeper when you're fishing those contours. Well, and <laughs> with that, I, I disagree with that. I, uh, we That's what we have our lead set up on as line corner reels. But I very rarely pay attention to the feet. And mm-hmm. only because those counters can vary from reel to reel and they can be off they can where if i've got those colors going and and a lot of times you know i'll it'll it'll, it'll get pretty precise with you know maybe it's three and a half colors out or or three and a half colors with the the next color touching the water or right right on your rod tip you know once you dial that in because you will dial it in that Uh that close then you can replicate it the same sure so now Um, we're doing the same thing you're 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 really paying attention to your line I mean, your line counter, what that number says, right. you want to be within a foot or two. Right. And me and Mitch, uh, like if my next color is blue, I got yellow out and then blue's my next color. Uh-huh. Well, when blue is about eight inches from the, after the rod tip, and that's where we've picked up fish, my next mm-hmm. one, that blue is going to be eight inches past right. the rod tip. So it's, it's accomplishing the same thing. It is. It is. So well, if you don't I, have a line counter reel, you don't need to go buy one. If you have one, it right. does work good. Though. You don't. And, and, and I don't know about you guys, but uh, like I, I tried to buy all the same reels. And when you put the same line, same reels, mm-hmm. then, you te- then you tend not to have that issue of it being yeah. off. So. Now, one of, the, now, one of the reasons we probably did that, too, is we got two different sets of reels. For our regular trolling reels, we have a Daiwa. It's a really good reel. For our lead core... Because it's just an expensive, inexpensive package, you can go get the Cabela's Depth Master right. Twos and Threes now for. And when you get them in the winter too, you can get the big reel and that seven and a half, eight foot rod, that Eagle Claw rod. That I think it's an Eagle Claw. The Eagle Claw mm-hmm. rods are yeah. really good. Mm-hmm. But you can pick those up for sixty, seventy bucks. Right. I mean, and but the the problem with the Depth Master is they reel fine, the drags work fine, but the line counter does not work. That it doesn't release. You push right. the button and it re-zero it. And sometimes you let out line and, 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 right. and it doesn't go. And, and, so, and then they're perfect lead core rods. That's, because what, and that's of, probably of why, that's probably nope, why that's we've got into the habit, too, right. just, of just watching color. the colors. Right. Because we can't trust that line counter. On our Daiwas, we can. But right. we have a little bit smaller Daiwas, so we use that just for trolling. Right. But we'll talk about that again. Yep. So, okay, so we got the rod selection. we got the reels. we got the reels. we got and, the line. And so now what do you use for leader? 25-foot leads. Okay, 25-foot, and, and I use 10. Uh, anything more than 10... To me is a waste. I mean, I you know you're you're trolling. The fish aren't going to see it anyways. Um, and I know there's several different ways to tie to the lead. 
So here's the reason why we do 25 foot leads because once we get down to about 10 foot leads, mm -hmm. we retie. And the reason is, is if we're fishing stuff, uh, it's just, it's a time thing for us. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a little bit different the way you, you tie on your leads because we do a direct tie mm -hmm. into our lead core. We want a little bit longer lead because if you get hung up and break off on that mm -hmm. mono or we're, we're using a, a, an XT or we don't, sometimes we've used fluorocarbon, but that's kind of slippery when you're trying to do the right. that we're talking about. So normally we use a 10 pound XT. That's all I use. The same, and, the same mono I use yeah. on my trolling rods. I just use what's left and I, I'll even yeah. strip it off the trolling rod and stick it. Yeah. yeah I've done the same thing. But yeah. so because that, that, that lead is 18 pounds. If you're having a 10 pound leader, that's 25 feet. We're going to break off sooner or later. Right. And because we tie on different than you, it's a pain in the ass out on the water to retie that knot. Right. We've had to do it. You have right. to do it. But so if you break off, now you're at an 18-foot lead. Right. And then the next time you're at a 14-foot. Mm -hmm. Once we yeah. get to that 10-foot knot, right. now we got to redo so it. So why don't you describe how you guys tie on to your, you know, your, your mono lead or to your lead? Well, we, we do a thing called a smith knot. Uh -huh. And I don't think we've... We have done a video on a Smith knot. I think I, I think you did one. I, yeah. I think we have one out on YouTube. If not, we'll look at it, and you can you can find it on YouTube. But what it is is, if you have the Cabela's eighteen pound, you'll take about six inches, eight inches of uh, the lead that's inside it, and you'll slide the the sheath back the, on the, the, the nylon the color. nylon color. Yeah. right. The color. Yeah, the you color slide that back, sheath. and you and you pull out about eight inches or so, six eight inches of lead. It's not you don't have to be super precise, and you break that off. So now you just have that sheath, or You're basically a, a tube of the nylon right. line. Right. Yeah. So then you do a you you have your twenty five foot lead. The we we use the Trilene XT, uh -huh. the ten pound XT. Yep. And you'll take that Trilene XT, and I like to cut it with the with clippers. Not my teeth. I do teeth a lot, but that that, that smashes it out wide. And so it gets hard to slide in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you get a clipper and you clip it, it's a nice, smooth cut, and you can actually slide it right in the hole where that lead came out. Now you can slide it right in the hole that eight inches. Mm -hmm. Once you have that eight eight inches, then down towards the bottom or or where the nylon I, I call it nylon. I don't even know what it is, but whatever. It, they're not, it's not. I, I think yep. it is wherever the nylon meets the uh, the mono go back about an inch and you just do an overhand knot you overhand knot that um floor car or that uh, xt mm -hmm. over right uh over the sheet yeah and just do an overhand knot and pull it tight or run the line all the way through of course okay. you need to have that 25 foot lead do you, do you do two overhand knots or do you just do the one just the one, just the one. okay so the way i was taught is you do one at the top and then one again another inch or two down below mm -hmm. um you just do the two because like you guys talked about, sometimes it seems like it gets slick or there's something goofy and it will, could pull through. You know, kind of pull, doing it more the last couple of years, this knot, and really testing it because I've heard a lot of people don't like it because no. they've had it slip and this and that. Well, we did. We had we had issues when we were trying to use fluorocarbon. Yeah. I think it's just that harder line. You know, it's stiffer. It's, it's slicker. Um, you know, there's no. It it doesn't. Uh, you know, form or It doesn't mono. mash down. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, so th so I think the whole key with that knot, and I love it. I'm never switching because I'm sold on it. Uh -huh. But it's making sure that you get the mono beyond where the overhand knot's going to be on the lead core, the hole where you tie it up, and then you cinch it down super tight. And on that mono, you bet it, it'll squeeze in and mm. compress and almost holding it right. we've caught a lot of big of fish on it and the thing that I like about it I know you use a swivel and we'll talk about that but the thing I like about it is it really goes through the eyelets it reels well. up in your reel it, yeah, yeah. Right. It's, yeah there's never any issues with the right. and we've done the barrel swivel before yeah. the really teeny ones yep um, but sometimes they get hung up. I don't know. Well, you're, like, you're kind of forced to have that, you know, 10 foot or shorter leader probably when you use a swivel, mm -hmm. um, just because, you know, to, to be able to net the fish. Uh -huh. Um, so that's, that's the other flexibility it gives us. We can run as long sure. a leader as we want. Sure. You know? and, and there, and remember when we're talking about this stuff, guys, that, um, you know, people have a bunch of different uh, reasons for running different length leaders as far as uh, the angle, the bait might dive or, you know, whatever else. Uh, I, I don't know how much I believe in that or, or, or what kind of effect that might have. Um, I can tell you the way I do it is I, I get the smallest barrel swivel and, and it has to be a barrel swivel um, that I can find. And uh, I found some real small ones recently, which were great. And I tie a, um, any kind of knot you, you want to tie. Um, I will do the same thing Brad Mitch do. I'll pull the, uh, slide the sheath back. I'll take away about six inches or eight inches of, of lead. I'll clip it out. 
And then I will just use the sheath, which by the way, the nylon sheath is very strong. So you're not losing any sort of, um, you know, uh, strength when you cut out that lead. Um, I, I tie the sheath onto one end of it. And then I just tie straight on a 10, uh, 10 pound test leader to the other one. Now, I don't, since I don't have the issues with the fluorocarbon slipping, I could use fluorocarbon if I want to, and that, I have. That is a benefit, yeah. And, um, but they also. If you're fishing really, really clear water. Well, and especially, and here's the other deal, is the swivel allows me to be able to, and I fish a lot of spinners. So I will use crawler harnesses behind lead core um, so you don't have that, you know, the weight system ahead of it. And I catch a lot of fish doing that, and that allows me to be able to fish those type of, of bait and they can spin all they want back there and it's not going to twist my line. Well, yeah, I mean, in, in, in devil's advocate on that, we're on, at the end of our 25-foot lead, we put a barrel swivel in there. And which you absolutely could. And, yeah. and so I just choose to keep that barrel swivel up away out of sight from the bait. I just use a quick clip, quick nope. clip right onto the, the, the loop <laughs> I've already tied for the crawler harnesses and off they go. Also, it's a very quick way to be able to switch between harnesses and, and crankbaits. Yeah. So I've had a lot of bites, especially in the spring, where I'll pick up a couple of fish on, on spinners, and that'll die off, and I'll hurry up and switch back to crankbaits, and we'll catch a couple of fish on crankbaits, and that'll die off, and we'll switch again. You do that all day, and you know you can bring yourself into a good finish at a tournament just by picking up here, two or three here and there. Mm -hmm. So I like that. I do the 10-foot. Usually, if even if you have to use a barrel swivel, it's big enough to where it doesn't get, it won't get reeled up. Um, with a ten foot leader, if you have an eight foot rod, it's, you're good to go. It hits it, and you still have a couple feet off the end. Well, that's that's yeah. you know more than you need anyway. Yeah. So for netting. for netting and everything else. So um, I've had a lot of success with it. I don't. Uh, I've used both. I've rigged up both. Um, you know, I I actually. Um, get annoyed with the swivel sometimes and prefer to do it like you guys do it with the the knots it's just um i just have less issues with it tangling yeah. and once that line gets tangled it's almost ruined you know i mean it's, it's real it. yeah that's when you're doing it anyway so it's really i think both of them are very uh proficient ways to to run your lead core i i i think it's kind of what you get comfortable with right you know right try them both See exactly. what you like. I don't think there's a there's pros and cons to both, right? And right. I just uh, I think that it's what I think truly what fishing is a lot is how well you get comfortable, how well you master one right. thing and trial and error. Yeah. Now to get back to your point a little bit of uh, the dive curve and stuff, whether you have a fifteen a thirty foot lead, to me I think that's a bunch of bullshit, really. Right. And the, my, my reasoning for that is if I'm over twenty five feet of water and I'm pulling crank baits, let's say. And I'm marking those fish at 23 feet. I'm pulling that crankbait. I'm letting either a little bit more lead out to get down there or a little less. It doesn't matter where my lead is. My lead is just to get it away from the from the lead. Right. To me, I, I don't notice it running, making my bait run different. Right. Like a little bit more mono makes it run flatter. I just... I. I just don't see the precision in that. I'm sure there is. I'm mm -hmm. sure if you had some engineer there, it, it changes the dive curve a little bit. But right. I make that adjustment by letting in a little more or bringing in a little more line. I mean, well, and, and when it when it comes to a lot of this, especially trolling lead, it's it's highly um, you can replicate it. So you know, if you if all of a sudden you're picking up fish on one rod, um, and say say you've dialed it in, you're running all the same crankbaits, hypothetically. <laughs> Um, but one rod is getting the fish. Um, check it out. Is that is that leader longer? Is right. It shorter. There but, might be something to it. You're right. Exactly. And that's where you know I, I'm not I'm not a scientist. <laughs> and I, and <laughs> so, I, I play one on TV. Yeah. yeah I only play one on TV. Um, but I know one thing. I, I'm no dummy. I'm going to make it exactly sure. the same as the well, one that, on top. and that's what you should do. I mean, that is that is yeah. the difference between. Uh, a, a very uh, a fisherman who is is aware and is watching and does it and is successful, and fishermen who kind of don't. You know, they go out and they catch one or two, and the guys that catch fifty, and they ask, "How'd you catch 50? Well, I paid attention to detail. So that's absolutely yes. great. Yeah. So real quick, uh, we only have a few minutes left. Let's talk about presentation real quick and what we do in the fall with the lead core. Uh, we went into great detail on how to rig it up. Now it's up to you guys to go out there and do what you do, right? So you go out there, you troll it. Um, I, we still troll around two miles an hour. The general rule is five foot of depth for every color. So every color you let out, you're supposed to be able to obtain five foot of depth with that. After about 30 or 35 feet, 
Uh, you can let out lead core until you're into the backing, and there's not a whole lot of difference unless you slow down and, and, and allow it to it's sink. It's just the friction on the line yep. ends up pushing it back up. ends up pushing it back up. So, so that's something to keep in mind. If you're seeing fish at 50 feet of water, uh, lead core is not going to be your choice. You're going to want to do a snap weight or something like that or, or the a three-way only way, rig. The only way you can get that done, yep, three-way rig, snap weight, or... Um, Use use a bait that dives has a twenty okay, foot dive. Giant dive, yeah. Yeah, giant dive. It has yeah. a twenty foot yeah. dive, but it's it's a little ripper or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and by all means, I, I've I've put a snap weight on lead corby. Sure. You yeah. know, so you can do that. Yep. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, whatever weight system you use to get it down, it really is up to you. Um, but, but what I find in the fall is is super effective. Is you'll see those fish about twenty or twenty five feet suspended middle of the lake uh, under big schools of bait fish. And I think the important part to remember is you want to get uh, your bait either right through the bait fish or just below them, depending on where the arches are. If the arches are mixed in, of course, you want it just above. But if the fish are below them, which is what we see commonly with our lakes here in the shad, you want to get that bait running just below the the, the bait fish. But just above the fish. But, but above the fish. The predator. And, um, predator and, fish. and that's where the lead core comes in super effective because you can really dial it down. And once you get it out, like we were talking about earlier, if you're out at four colors and, you know, the next color is eight inches off the end of the reel, uh, you start off with the eight and you reel it up to four. And then you reel it up to two. Or you let it out to 12. And then you go out to another color. Um, constantly... Uh, looking to see what's going to create that strike, yeah. yep. and, uh, and and then mimic it with your other and rods. then mimic it with your other rods and just troll it. Just remember, big long sweeping turns, uh, lead core. Uh, when it gets tangled, it's a disaster. And it's really I mean, slow it's to react disaster. when you're turning. It really because of that drag it has. There. Yep. If you try making a tight turn, man, it's not. Gonna it's happen. not going to be good either. And and tune your baits. A foul tuned bait will run it over into your other line and. Uh, it is very hard to get lead core untangled, especially after it's spun. And then you are just stripping it off. And not only is that rod, unless you have more lead core on the boat, not only is that rod not good for the rest of the day or both those rods, but now you're stopping by uh, the store on the way home and you're spending a hundred bucks to re re spool. So, um, you know, just be aware, play with it. If you're not familiar with it, then just use two rods to begin with before you throw out the four, because uh, trust me, I get tangled two or three times a year, and I've been doing it forever, and I want to go nuts and throw the rods in the lake because it's just such a mess. So oh, yeah. so be aware that it, it, there are some hazards to it. But uh, I, mean, I, think, I think one of the things, too, that guys need to do, and then we'll wrap it up, is, is if you have a boat that has rod holders, it's, it's very advantageous once you get that rod out to be able to put it in the holder in yeah. the holders and you want to keep yeah. that rod either level with the water or even pointed down at the water a little bit because if you have the tip in the air it doesn't create the distance that you need or the separation yeah so for the, for the inside. and we're talking side to side side, side to side, side. Yeah, yeah one on one side of the boat one on the other keep the rod tips down um that creates the more separation you put them up it'll suck them back in three four five inches mm. and before you know it, you got a rod runs bad and it'll run right across so yeah. yep. uh any parting words mitch um no, just get out and do it. It, it. It's a great way to fish deeper, you know, to pull crankbaits in deeper water. Especially through those pods of bait fish. It's awesome. Yeah. Yep. And it's a lot of fun. And it's nothing like watching that rod tip just start to bounce because you have a fish. So, yep. and, and it's, and again, and I know we've touched this on other podcasts, it's not just for walleye. Oh my God. It works awesome for wipers. Trout, trout, bass. Wait, we did say you, you both catch a lot of trout, uh, especially <laughs> June. So. Especially June. Well, in catfish. I mean, I remember Mitch's catfish. Holy yeah. cow! Yeah. So anyway, we'll leave you on that note. Hey, <laughs> hey guys, thanks for uh, listening. Um, Josh, any parting words? Uh, just uh, like Mitch said, get out and try it. Uh, you got to practice, and it takes a lot of practice. And um, don't get frustrated. Keep going. Uh, other than that, um, uh, you know. You, you just need to, to keep listening, and we'll keep giving you guys info on how to do this stuff. Yeah, again, if you have any questions for us, make sure you get a hold of, a hold of us at alleyesonfishing at gmail.com or on any of our Facebook stuff. So leave a comment. Ask us a question. That's right. We'll, we'll, we'll answer the best we can. All right, guys, get on the water. Thanks. This has been All Eyes on Fishing. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, go ahead and subscribe to The Next Level. And you can hear longer podcasts and more information on all of your favorite topics. And check us out at alleyesonfishing.com for apparel, 
blogs, and other information. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. All eyes on fishing, leading you to the next level.